Um, our first reading this morning is from Psalm 127. Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb, his generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. And from the Gospel of Mark. The people brought children to Jesus, hoping he might touch them. The disciples shooed them off. But Jesus was irate and let them know it. Don't push these children away. Don't ever get between them and me. These children are at the very center of life in the kingdom. Mark this, unless you accept God's kingdom in the simplicity of a child, you'll never get in. Then, gathering the children up in his arms, he laid his hands a blessing on them. May God bless these words. Good morning, beautiful people. So I must admit that I have a bit of anxiety about sharing this testimony story today um, because I'm sharing about my trip to Africa and my trip to Colombia and it was so great of an experience I'm still wrapping it up in my mind and I'm still framing thoughts around it and so I'm sharing things with you today that are sort of incomplete um, but I hope it translates um, to something that you can receive and take home with you. I promised Marisol who is from Mopuhan, Colombia, that I would share her story as if it were my story. Mopuhan is a community in Colombia where there are a hundred families who are living together who have been displaced four to five times because of free trade agreements with Colombia. So these folks who live off the land and who grow their own crops and who build their own houses, their homes were mowed over by bulldozers. And on one side of the land, you see the homes mowed over, you see all the crops mowed over. And then on the other side of the land, you just saw empty and barrenness, emptiness and barrenness. And these folks had been through this four and five times. And Marisol asked that I tell you all about it. What they did was they took the scraps from the homes that were bulldozed over and they moved them to the other side of the field and they started to make makeshift homes. They took the leftovers from their crops and they tried to make meals out of it. These families met together every day under this sort of canopy and they brought all of their food and all of their things together so they can feed the entire community. There were children there who had not been to school because their families were afraid to let them go because they were afraid they may be killed or kidnapped. Could you imagine living like that? I couldn't, I didn't know what to do in hearing that story. I didn't know what to do when they were telling me, uh, you know, how they were living. I didn't know how to feel. And she asked a question that I've been sitting with ever since I went to Columbia. She asked this question. She said, where is God? in the midst of all this violence. And I must admit I was stunned. Every answer that came to my mind sounded to me like cliche, like something I should not say to her. So I didn't answer her, I just came home and I thought about it. Then I had an experience um, when we went to El Tamarindo. We were visiting with the community leaders we had been out in the hot sun for a while and they were telling us their stories about how their land was taken from them and how their family members were murdered and so on and so on and so on and the kids were st standing around listening and they were bored. All of a sudden the rain started coming down and the kids went outside. They took off their clothes and they started playing in the rain. The drain from the house that was pouring the water off became a water feature at a water park. The mud on the ground became a water slide. And these kids started just running and splashing and playing in the rain. They climbed on top of the roof and they were, the water was collected on the roofs and they were bouncing around on the roofs enjoying the water. And I said, well, there is God outside playing with these children. So I prayed this prayer, Lord, give me eyes like a child. 
so that I may discern you in all things. Give me the mind of a child so that I can be creative in resolving conflicts and problems around me. This is what I prayed. So I came up with one answer, that God is living in and through these children. While we were complaining, or wrong word, while we were talking about the realities of the world, these children were able to go outside and just play. I never felt so close and connected to God than I did in that particular moment. I went to Africa and I was at Mother of Peace Orphanage in Matuko. Is this okay? Yes, yes, sir. Um, I was in Mother, at Mother of Peace in Matuko volunteering in an orphanage that was created by um, Dr. Scott, Robert Scott from Oakland and um, Mama Jean and Mama Stella who are the leaders of the orphanage there. And when the bus came into the land and we got off of the bus, this young man came running from one of the houses and he grabbed my hand and just held my hand. And I was so uncomfortable because I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to receive it. And he didn't speak English. I didn't speak any Shona, which is the language they spoke. So we did nothing but held hands and for about an hour and a half he just held my hand. I was just, I didn't know what to do. So I just sat there uncomfortable. Eventually, I got somebody who was able to interpret, and I asked them to ask him why he was holding my hand. And she did, and he said, he was holding my hand because he loved me. He was holding my hand because he was thanking me as his ancestor for coming to see about him. I had no idea what to do with that. Once again, an experience that was just too big for my heart and my mind and my emotion to contain. So I just continued to hold his hand. I started asking the stories of some of the other children that are around there. These are children, some of whom are living with AIDS and HIV, and I've lost all of their family members to AIDS and HIV. So in this series talking about modern families and about sacred relationships, these children have connected to each other to make families because they've lost everything and everyone. Yet they had so much joy. I was stunned. They, they're living with the same thing I'm living with, HIV, some of them full-blown AIDS, and I know sometimes I'm so down, I don't know what to do with myself. But these kids had chapel every day. They're Catholic, and so they had chapel, and in chapel they were singing Blessed Assurance. They pulled out their Congos, and they pulled out the Maracas, and all these instruments came out, and they were singing with such joy, and I was like, whoa. Here you are again, God, showing up and showing your face. Give me the eyes and the ears so that I can continue to discern you in all things. Every child that was there connected to the adults that were there in some kind of way. And at the end of our trip, I'm fast forwarding through a lot, but at the end of our trip, they wrote us letters. And in every letter that I got, you know what those children asked for? They didn't ask for Nikes, they didn't ask for toys, they didn't ask for games. They didn't ask for money. You know what they asked us? They asked us to remember them. They asked us to tell their story. They asked me to tell my children about them. And they called me dad or baba. I didn't know how to receive that once again. So I just opened my heart and I let as much love as I could muster come out of me into those children. And I opened myself to receive. And thinking about all that, it made me aware of how empire affects the world. It made me see my part of privilege and how I hold privilege and sometimes it keeps me from seeing the truth of how people are really living. This changed my life forever, going to Africa. I thought that, I was told that when I go to Africa and I step down on the soil, that I would feel this surge come through my body and I would feel so connected. Well, I didn't have that experience. I got there and I was overwhelmed and confused. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know what to think. Until one of the children again said, Baba, welcome home. When I heard those words, again, I connected in a way that I can't even describe to you. 
But it made me know that I was in the right place at the right time. I was exactly where I was supposed to be. What am I saying today? What are we sharing? I don't have all the answers, but this I do know. I know that Christ has called us to love one another with extravagant love. I know that Christ has called us to be connected to one another, whether we're connected by blood or not. I know that I'm responsible for you, and you are responsible for me. And when we think and share and love in that way, everyone is covered and no one is left out. So I ask you today to pray this prayer. Lord, give me the eyes of a child so that I may discern you in all things. Give me the mind of a child so that I can think creatively and resolve the conflicts and problems around me in the world. I believe that those children who I met in both Colombia and in Zimbabwe are holding the truths of what we need to resolve all the issues of this planet. I believe that. Last night, yesterday, we went to the water slides in um, Roseville. And I took a moment just to stand back and look. And once again, these kids with wild abandonment jumped in the water. They had no fear. They were not afraid. They, they had their life jackets on, but they weren't tripping about whether they would sink or swim in the water. They only got afraid when we made them afraid because they don't know fear unless we give it to them. In the same way, they don't know hate unless we teach it to them. So our responsibility, my responsibility, is to share love. Amen? Amen? Our responsibility is to think about the people who we're not just connected to once again by blood, but who we're connected to by Christ. And Christ loves us all, and because of that, we love us all. Amen. Amen. And so I'm sharing this song as a blessing to, I should first say, um, there, was, there would be no way for me to actually have made it to Colombia or to Africa without you all. So I thank you and I appreciate you for allowing me the space to go to both Colombia and Africa. And I thank you for the relationships, the sacred relationships that I have made here and connected with people here. Thank you for loving me and thank you for allowing me to love you back. <laughs> 